Hello, my name is George, and today I'm going to walk through a program that I wrote that helps people manage their Steam inventories and, more specifically, Counter-Strike items. So for people who are not familiar with how this works, I'm going to quickly just walk through the problem that this program is solving. So in this game called Counter-Strike, you're able to buy in-game items and store them in your Steam inventory. But the Steam inventory only allows you to store a thousand items at a time. So how people get around this or what the game allows you to do is put items in a storage unit. So people can put items in a storage unit. So this storage unit has a thousand items in it. And that way they're able to own over a thousand items even though their, their current inventory only allows for a, th a thousand. So there are sites online where people can um, find the value of their inventory, but the sites online don't are not able to know what items you have in your storage units. So what this program allows you to do is create a SQL database that you enter in the items that you own. And it also uses an API to update the prices, the current prices of those items. So here's the program. The code will be in the description to link to the GitHub, GitHub link. And um, I won't be walking through the code in this video because this is much, much longer than the last one, the last uh, card counting program that I wrote. So I'm just gonna walk through how it works. And if you're someone with Python experience, or if you just like to see the code, please feel free to do so. And let me know any updates or, or anything that I can change to make it more efficient. Okay. So here's the first, um, this is the interface for the program and we have a couple different sections here. This is the item list list box, which will list items as we add them to the database. Here is the add edit item um, boxes here where we can add items or edit them. We can remove them based on their item number, which is our key for the database. And then we can um, update the prices here once we start adding items. So how you add an item is you get it's, first you go to the Steam Community Market, which is where all these items are bought from and you click on an item. So here, this is just one I have pulled up, the M4A4. You'll copy the item link here. You paste the item link in there, and then we'll fill in the rest of the fields. The item number key, which first item will be one. The name, which is optional. You can add a name if you'd like it to be different than what it is, what it is here. But I've made it so that it pulls the name from the link, so automatically use that name that the link is using. So we'll leave that blank. We'll put in the date. You can put it in whatever format you like to store your items in. Cost per item, how much? We'll just say we want to be making a profit. So let's say we bought it at $8, maybe four months ago. And then number of items, 10 current price. This we're just going to leave at zero because we will update the prices eventually. So we're just going to leave it there. Click add item. Then we have our item added. It's added to our item list. We're good to go. Now, if we try to add it again, this item will already exist. So we need to select another action. So we can't um, do that. We have to make sure if we want to do that, we need to change the item number to two. So even though we have duplicate items here, it's since the key is different, we're able to do that. So let's go ahead and we'll show the remove item feature. So we'll put in the item number two, press enter. We'll have the item removed. We try it again, the item number does not exist. So perfect, let's try entering another item. Let's go here and for example, breakout case. Click on the item, we'll grab the link, change the link, the item number we'll keep as two. The date, we'll change this to 5-2021. Cost per item, about 60 cents. For example, for this item, someone may own a lot of these items, so 1500, which would be in their storage unit. And then we'll click add. The item will be added here. And if you have a database viewer, so this is DB browser for SQLite is what I use. Um, I've already connected it to the SQLite database that we're using. So we're gonna go ahead and refresh this. So here we can see the items, everything here. And um, now we can also see these items. We have our own built-in um, database viewer pretty much which is here. So this shows the items that we added, date, cost per item, which this is what we added, the number of items, user input, current price, which is what we uh, currently put in, we put in zero, 
total costs, which is calculated. These are calculated fields here, and then the R link. Then we also have the ability to click show inventory statistics. It'll show us the total inventory value, which right currently is zero because we haven't updated the price and the total inventory cost, which is calculated by cost of per item and the number of items. All right, now let's try and go ahead and edit one of these items. So let's clear these out. We'll keep with item number two and let's change the date instead of being 521, which is shown in both of these um, database editors or database viewers. We'll change it to be 75 cents. Click edit, the items updated. We'll go here, refresh this, 75 cents, perfect. Show inventory, okay, it's over, 75 cents, so that's been updated. We can update the number of items. Well, we already have 1,500, 1,600. Edit, item updated, 1,600. You don't need to go through each one, but this would be updated to 1600. Perfect. And then this is here, we can change the name. So let's just change it. If we don't want the full name, let's just say break out case. Edit, our name has now been changed. Refresh it, changed on our database viewer, changed on our inventory update here. So we already showed how you can remove items. So we don't need to go back through over that. The rest of this edit is pretty similar to the same. Um, now we can go ahead and update prices. So we click this update all current price updated one, two, perfect. Current prices updated for all items. The Steam um, API has a limit on the number of requests that you can send per minute, and I, it's at 19. So there's a timer on how the requests are sent so that you do not hit that limit because if you hit that limit, then it will return none and you won't have your prices updated um, if you have over 19 in a minute. So as these lists get longer, you keep the timer on there so that you don't bypass that limit. So close this down. We haven't updated it yet. So current price is still zero. Refresh current prices. We have 14.54 and 3.52. So 3.52 is what we had for our breakout cases. And then 1454 is what we had for this cybersecurity. So that's our how we updated the prices. Go ahead and show that on our inventory viewer here. Current price, 1454, 352. Then we click our show inventory statistics. And now we have uh, the value and in, in total inventory cost um, numbers. Now there are other things I would have like to add to this program, like possibly another um, data, another table for transactions. So if you had transactions that you had, if you sold, maybe if you only sold um, 600 of your 1600 cases, then you can see in history of all your transactions. I'd also wanna add like an export to Excel button. So you could export this um, database to Excel if you wanted to do other things with it um, yourself. But I've spent a lot of time on this program. So I kind of I'm looking to move on. But if you have a database brow browser um, for SQLite, this one is the one that I used, you are able to export as CSV. So if you use this program and you do want to export as an Excel file, you can export it here. All right, so that is how this inventory, uh, Steam Inventory Tracker works. Uh, you can add, edit, remove, and update prices for your items as you add them. And you can track your total value, your total cost, and any other uh, numbers here. So again, if you're someone who has experience with Python, or even if you have experience in SQL, please feel free to um, go to this, this link and, and, and let me know if you know of any um, areas where I can improve my SQL statements or my Python code.